Here are four questions I've recently posed to Mr. Phil Rendon. I'd like to present these as formal questions to general believers in the Godhead doctrine. I'll also give my reasons behind the questions. First, could you explain what sort of meaning the New Testament language of Father and Son has in the Godhead system? Second, in the Godhead system, is the Son, that is, the body, omnipresent prior to the virgin birth? Third, if the body of the Godhead is eternal, does that not require that the space the body inhabits be eternal as well? How does this not necessitate the eternal existence of God and also of material space, thus making two eternals, polytheism? Fourth, if the Father, that is, the soul, is completely God and is one-third of the Godhead, how does that not make the Godhead greater than God? And my reasons behind asking these questions. First, Father and Son have been emptied of any real meaning in the Godhead system. This relation of Father to Son and Son to Father communicates a personal relation, not an impersonal one, such as we see between parts of a thing. A soul is not a father to a body. A body cannot be the son of a soul. The natures of these two things are different, as we'll cover more in question four. A son has the same nature as his father. The eternal, only begotten of the father, cannot be of a different nature than the father. And since there is only one true God who is perfect and uncompounded, the Father and Son and Holy Ghost are all the same numeric nature. Second, an omnipresent body is a repudiation of common sense. For a body to be a body, it has to have an end point in space. If a body has parts ordered in a certain spatial way, then for all of them to be present everywhere would be to destroy it. If your nose, kneecaps, and liver are all omnipresent together, then the ordering is mangled and you don't have a body but a soup. Third, likewise, if this body is eternal, the space the body is in is eternal as well. If part of God exists within or because of something else, then that something else is eternal with God. If God depends on something outside of himself to be, then God is not the first cause and therefore is not God. That which is behind him is God, and there is nothing behind God. Fourth, if, as they say, the Father, again the soul, is completely God, then there is nothing beyond this soul that is God, and anything more than the soul is not God. If somehow there is more than this completely God soul that is God, then there are gods. If this completely God soul is part of something which is completely God, then we've constructed an irrational object, for a whole is more than its separate parts, and a part is something less than a whole that without which the whole cannot be what it is. Now, these so-called parts of God imply contrary attributes. If two things have the same nature, or rather kind of nature, such as Peter and Paul, their natures do not have contraries. Now, the nature of soul is different from that of body. The attributes of one are not identical with those of the other, otherwise they would be the same kind of thing. The parts of a deck are not identical in their natures. There's wood and there's metal, both in their necessary forms. There are things that metal is that wood is not, and vice versa. Now, if the Father, again the soul, is completely God, then those contrary attributes which are in the body and spirit are not God, for there are not contraries in God. There's not dissimilarity within the perfect being, which is God. To say that there is something in the nature of God that is against something else in God is to create an imperfect being and an imperfect being cannot be the perfect being. If the Godhead is perfectly, completely God and is made up of parts, then there is something in those parts, each considered separately, that is lacking full Godness. And if these parts are not identical in God, then God has imperfection within himself and is not the most perfect and most holy being. Only the Trinitarian God we find in Scripture is worthy of all our praise, worship, and adoration. An imperfect God will not do.